Hey everybody, it's uh, Tuesday, February 22nd, 2022, and this is DraftBit Office Hours. I am Dave, and with me is Rahul, our lead success engineer. And uh, we're gonna take some questions and comments. Happy two day. Yes, happy two day, George. Yeah, two, 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 two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we got some people here already, Carl, Mohan, and George is joining us. George is our uh, product lead, head of product. Um, all right, so let's jump in. Uh, is there any chance to see drawer navigation coming in DraftBit anytime soon, or was uh, or what is the most recommended way to implement one? So. You, uh, you, you want to say something, Rahul? Um, there's no like uh, fixed timeline for drought navigation yet. Uh, I'm wondering if how you would implement that is um, like right now, I don't think of a way that you can do it, but like there's something called conditional display that you can use and like try to like. Uh, imitate how a draw navigation works like you know like have a view that when you click a button it can open up from a side and have like icons for you to click on where you can navigate to certain pages in on your app but apart from that uh, i don't think there's a library yet that we can integrate to to do uh, to do uh, draw navigation uh, it's something that we can play around with a bit and probably come up with a sample example app, but that's not draw navigation, right? That's just like we trying to imitate what draw navigation is. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the only idea I thought of was you could use a modal and simulate the similar behavior with a modal, you know, instead of it swiping from the side, it'll pop up from the bottom. Uh, but you could effectively do the same thing, you know. Sorry, we didn't have a better answer than that. Uh, but. Okay, so what's next? Uh, Mohan says Expo does have support. If we could use that as a starting point. Yes, it does. Um, it just has not been implemented on our end yet. So you might be able to get it working by importing the package or doing some, I don't know, I have not played around with it. Rahul, have you? No, I haven't. I think Mohan said he did. Uh, did you get any success there? Not, not really. really. Okay. But you can always uh, vote for it on our feature request section. And, uh, you know, we keep a close eye on it. And we want to like develop features that users want. So, uh, uh, Mohan is saying he was new at DraftBit when he tried that. So, if you have any success, let us know. Share it in the community so other people can see. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I don't see any other questions. You guys just here to hang out or what? Confetti. Okay. Yeah. Rahul, if you want to. Sure. Um, so, yeah. So I'll start with the confetti. It's mostly custom code based. So, and it's a quite a simple example. I'll try to showcase. Um, so, and yeah, Mohan, I know your uh, suggestion as well. So what we're trying to do today is we're going to do some uh, showcases. One would be the confetti. Uh, the other would be, I was thinking we'll go over simple flex concepts in the app, like in DraftBit. So, you know, you can help, which will help design the layout part of your DraftBit app easier. And uh, Mohan has been nice and kind enough to uh, share a screen with us in which he has some layout problems. And we'll try, me and Dave would try to like sort that out together and see if we can, you know, explain along the way what are the best practices that we can do to get uh, a layout which is like scalable as in like you know like it works the same way on <clears throat> ios and android because i've seen users having some problem 
keeping the layout the same on iOS and on Android. So I thought that would be helpful to our users as well. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll start with sharing my screen for the Confetti app. And let's see if I can showcase that live to you guys. So I hope my screen is visible to everyone. Let me just increase the size. Uh, I was trying to do it through a custom function, but didn't get any luck there. So what I'll do is I will try to uh, do it with a custom code component, but it works the same way. So uh, hopefully you guys can implement that in your application. So let me first show you how it works, and then I'll show you how I did that. So I press shoot, you can see confetti dropping down. And this is like the package that I'm using is very customizable. So you can, you know, change how your confetti shoots up, down, and like you can do a whole bunch of things with it. So this is how it looks on the Android app. And uh, for Carl's use case, I've kind of tailored it to a way that it works on pressing a button. If you guys want, you can do that when the screen loads as well. So, you know, like you can have that use case as well. So that's how it looked. And now what I'll do is I'll show you how I implemented it. So it is done with the help of this package. It's called React Native Confetti Cannon. Uh, maybe I'll share a link to the package in the, uh, in the chat. And uh, this is how simple it was to implement. Basically, a couple of lines of code. You don't really need that here because I'm using a global variable instead of string variables to implement this. So what I have is a global variable. I'm calling it shot. And what we do is whenever the shot is true, we will show you the confetti cannon firing. Otherwise, it won't fire. Uh, so yeah, basically this is the code. Uh, let me kind of copy it and paste it in our chat as well, just so that if anyone wants to use that. And uh, I'll just show you what I've done on the button as well. Oh, it wants me to save. That's always a good idea to save. Uh, so on my button, it's as simple as just set variable, and this is probably not the best way to do it, but what I'm doing is is I am negating it. So basically what that would do is, let me see if I can showcase that. So it shoots the first time. Uh, probably wouldn't shoot the second time, if you guys noticed, and it shot the, sec uh, the third time. So... This is just a simple demo, so you can implement it the way that you would like to do it. So if I just do uh, true here, I'll make sure that it's all in lowercase, and try it again. So put shoot, and then I press again. I technically should have shot. Oh, okay. So I think uh, the other way was probably better. But yeah, so the implementation is like when you press the shoot button, it should basically shoot the cannon. And let me try it one more time just for my peace of mind. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So when you press the shoot button, it sets the value to true and it shoots. Uh, so that was the confetti cannon. Rahul, uh, let me... Um... Uh, that's awesome, by the way. But uh, Carl's asking if we can see the custom code again, or paste the sure. full snippet. Uh, oh, okay. You want the entire snippet? Yeah, my bad. I should have. So there we go. So it's, there are some things here that you don't really need. So this was me trying to implement it through a custom function, which mm. didn't really work. But I'll share this entire thing. If you guys want to use it in a custom function, try it and let us know if it works. Very cool. So 
So there we go. Oh, it says your message is too long. It needs to be shorter. We can put it in the community under his post. Yeah, Carl, I think that would be, that's a great idea, Dave. So what we'll do, Carl, is we'll put it under the post that you put on uh, in the custom code section, or sorry, ask a feature section, and we will do that there. So that was one demonstration. Uh, the other demonstration that we wanted to do today was for uh, Mohan's screen. And if Mohan, if you would like to join us while we do that, so in case like we can get uh, feedback from you, like a live feedback that what you want to do, that would be easier. Oh, there we go. He agreed. Thank you, Mohan. All right, I'll invite him right now. Okay, we hear you, I don't see you. Yeah, okay, let me just... Always challenged here. One sec. How do I click enable compatibility now? How do I turn the video on? I did this the last time. Yikes. Maybe we just go without the video? You should be able to hover over your um, name or your... your Profile? Then, okay. Yeah, there um, should be some options. I don't shoot. I don't see it. I'm just trying to figure out where it was. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see it. Um, there's a microphone, HD. I think we lost. So in the meanwhile, oh, yeah, it says like signal here. So in the meanwhile, what I'll do is Mohan was kind enough to share a screen from his app in which he needs some layout help. So what we'll do is we'll share that screen with everyone here and we'll try to go over the layout issues and see what we can do the best uh, to help him out. And this is, again, like we haven't really looked at the screen before. So if we don't really succeed, please feel free to like, you know, leave a message that we can do a better job. Uh, so let me quickly share the screen. Uh, yeah, I'll try to reconnect you, Mohan. Okay. Rahul, is, that's your screen. No, that's Mohan's screen. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Oh, okay. So I thought I was sharing my screen. Mohan, are you sharing your screen as well? No, not that I... No, I'm not. Okay, maybe that's oh, okay. you, Rahul, then. Yeah, that's my screen. It's okay. it's Mohan's app. Okay. Okay, so here's the app. Now, uh, let me first look at this. I think I might need to reduce the size a little bit here. Let's look at it, how it looks first, and then we can try and debug it. Or I wish I could control the down button a little better, but it's, it's a bit of a pain. It goes, puts it right down at the bottom. Right. Um, so I'm assuming this is the done button here. And what I'll do is I'll try to first uh, see how the screen is actually laid out. Uh, so, so we have some view components here, a fetch that does a list. I think this list is what shows the accordion. Yeah, the the stuff below that is all uh, all um, what's it called um, hidden. So don't worry about that. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, switch country, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, is hidden. That's going to move somewhere else anyway. Oh, perfect. So basically, we have here a view that's this that shows my places and this add button and a divider under it. And then I'm just speaking out loud for everyone to know like what how the screen is actually laid out. And then we have this fetch component which shows a list of accordions, Mohan. Yep. Okay. 
an accordion and then, an accordion with a list of elements which i think is a new new approach you guys have taken right correct so i was just discussing with mohan before like how we made the accordion component easier to use like before we had a lot of restrictions on it that you couldn't add views or other components in it but now after the update we allow you to add basically anything under it so which makes it easier and more useful uh let me just first take a look at how the screen is looking so it looks like a fetch component uh am i missing something here no by the, by the way the um the the thing doesn't display because i i took uh there were previously there's just text elements and then i decided right. to add views i mean you know a little more stylish styling and now it doesn't display the stuff on the deep which is which is good to okay. tackle if you will yeah yeah definitely and like uh again uh dave open the suggestions as well so but first things first uh let me first tell you why this done component is down at the bottom here uh let me take a look first. you can move the done up you can move it so that we don't have to worry about the other stuff you can move it up uh, to right uh, up. do you mean like this yeah yeah right before set uh, switch country or whatever set country gotcha gotcha let me pull this back in again and this is gonna be a bit trickier. There we go. There we go. You oh, I just moved the button. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Control Z, guys. You know, Control Z undoes everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so again, moving the done in between here. You can move it up above set country. You can. Yeah. One more. Yeah, perfect. And there we go. So, so basically, uh, first point first. So when you have a fetch component here and a list in it, it usually comes with a flex value of one. What that does is it basically tells this component to take as much space on the screen as it can. So for instance, if I put this done and I put an add a flex of one to this, so what that would do is it would divide the screen into two equal halves and now you can see that okay. uh, let me let me put a background color on it for now i hope i'm not spoiling too much of your screen here mohan no 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 please uh, please mark with it it's not a problem so now you can see the screen is somewhat equally divided into two halves if i wanted to like kind of make it you know give the list more space and give done a little lesser space, what I can do is uh, I can go to the fetch. Sorry, I can go to my list here and give this a flex of two. So basically this flex is kind of ratios, right? So what is what it's telling, uh, okay, I think I might be confusing more people here. Here's the fetch inside this and that that might not work uh one way to quickly solve this would be having the fetch inside a view so let me try to add that here without screwing up a lot of other things no issue it was before there in the view before anyway so i just took it out oh okay yeah go ahead uh So let me pull this fetch inside the view and then try to move. Okay, that's probably not the best thing to do. Control Z to the rescue again. There we go. So now. <clears throat> I have this view <clears throat> and what I'll do is uh and if you can already notice that that the list is gone now because the view does not know to expand because it has a list in it so let me put 
a flex value of two here, telling it to take twice as much of space on the screen than the next level. So basically what, hap what happened here is now your screen is divided into three parts. Two parts are taken by the view and one part is taken by this done component here. So that's what I basically wanted to showcase uh, with adding the flex of two to it. So that's how the ratios work here. Uh, will that will that also work um, when you have like um, a view that is got the direction which is horizontal, where you are trying to space two horizontal sections? Um, that's actually a good question. So basically, you are you saying that if this entire screen was horizontal, in which meaning that this was no, 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 that's not what I'm saying. Like if you go down to if you go down a little, um, let's see, the view. Um, if you go to, into the fetch, if you go to the fetch, right, and then if you go down, down, open up the row, mm -hmm. and then if you, there is one which is like horizontal, like where you see the delete uh, trash can, and then the, um, the 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 accordion next to it, that's a horizontal view, right? So. How do you how do you control? Can you control the spacing between where the trash can is and where the accordion is by the same kind of strategy? You can you can mess with it right there. So I'm just trying to see. Uh, okay, you're talking about this fetch. I'm I'm, I'm trying to find the trash can actually. Yeah, um, that's delete. It should be a little further up, maybe, where or maybe down. I think is it down? I don't know where it is. To be honest, I forget where it is now. I think it's further up somewhere. Uh, um, there it is. Delete. I mean, what, delete. It Just is, go up the stack. Go up above the stack. Above stack, yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, that view that's above that is the one that uh, controls. Okay, that's one that has the uh, horizontal um, layout. Gotcha. Go let me just. Yeah. Let me just try. So one handy trick when dealing with layout issues is try to put like a background color behind it, which kind of like separates it from the rest of the things and kind of give you a more visual view of what's going on. Okay, so this is the view. And now your view here contains a delete button, which is this and an okay, so it contains a stack and a delete button. Gotcha. Yep. So now you want to kind of to the flex situation here, uh, in which, uh, so these two items actually don't have flex properties on them. I so suppose you could, put a view, you could put a view above the stack, I suppose, right? Right. So yeah. if you, if I put, sorry, go ahead, Dave. No, go for it. It's all right. Uh, so if you put these things into a view, uh, that would give. Uh, if you then put the a stack option into of, a view, if you put stack into a view, correct. And then we can have. Uh, even now, if you realize that I can do a flex on this one, uh, but whatever flex value I'm going to give it, it's still going to take the entire space because there's no other element that is taking the flex. Let me try and see what happens. So if you notice, it expanded because it, it took the entire space available for it on the screen. Why and is now it? it? So flex basically means this means that, right? So what it does is it like it kind of expands to whatever avail area available to it. Uh, so if I put another view here, then I put delete in that, and try to hit the alignment again, which didn't work that time. Okay. So now, if I put this to one, technically it should like give both of them if you see like now these both things are sharing this horizontal space equally. So, and just to better highlight that, what I can do probably is do this. 
once it updates you'll notice that half of it is gray now and half of it is the other color so what is the flex value you gave for the left half and the right half 51 1 exactly so it's basically all about ratios right so right now it's 1 1 so it's a 50 50 ratio cool. so what i can do here is i can give this other view which needs to expand more a value of two and then you'll realize that now this would take one third of the area and this oh, will take two thirds so that's that's and that's uh, i was i was playing around with the percentage you know the way you have the points and the percentage view yeah. and I would, I would mess with that this is much cleaner yeah and if i want to do it like one fourth i hope i'm not pushing it but it should technically yeah expand it more just because this is all about ratios so this is taking one one fourth of the area and this one takes three fourth of the area remaining oh, cool. so those are views uh, so essentially and, you 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 essentially have the power of a table layout here exactly so basically that's that's a very very good use case here so what i can do is if you notice there are some tables in which like you know you have like a serial number number which is a very which is one number so you can just have like a very small width yes. of a box there and then like something that has a bigger width yeah. so you can do that all with flex so all you need and is a number of views and then you just apportion the ratios to each view whether you're doing it on a horizontal or a vertical exactly and where flex comes into the most use is when you're doing responsive displays right so like on some screens um uh, more mostly in like web but you can also do that on mobiles as well because not all screens are the same size right so if you want to control ratios on the screens um uh, i would always go for flex because even if you see this on a very big phone screen you will notice that this part will again just take one third of the area and this would or one fourth in this case, and this would take three fourths of the area on that screen as well. So your layout won't change. It will expand and contract, but it will still be in the same form, if which I is wanted, really helpful. If I wanted to mm -hmm. add, uh, if I wanted to kind of make it a little more narrow where I have a little more space to the left and the right of, you know, the whole mm -hmm. thing that you see that the whole, whole thing, um, right. would, I, would I create a view that actually represents the blank space on the left and the right? Or would you use a strategy like putting 10, 10 there, like margin? Would you use this mar margin as a, as a way to do that? Uh, yes, I, I, would, I would suggest going with margins because that will give you easier control in the builder. Like, you know, like you can put percentage values here as well. But now you notice because uh, we are taking 16 pixels on the right and 16 pixels on the left. Uh, Flex only knows that I can expand to this much area. Like whatever the si size of the screen is minus whatever the margin is. But if you want to be agnostic, device agnostic, would it be better to use percentage rather than uh, pixel points? Uh, in a way, yes. But like usually margins and paddings are like... Uh, can you can't really take my word for it but like usually margins and uh margins are like kind of uh how would i say it like easier to do with point values as in like uh no matter how big the screen is it will still take like just this percentage of the area but that right. really depends on on you know like sometimes you want to give margins just to put stuff a little bit towards like to a little bit like towards inside of the screen. You don't want it to like, you know, almost flow out of the screen. So like a 16 point or a 32 point margin will work on all screens and kind of look nice as well. But again, you can do percentage values there as well. Okay. Um, just a note, if you use a percentage on something like a margin or uh, for like making padding around your, the content of your screen, the that's going to be calculated based on the screen size so it's going to have like on a bigger screen you're going to have a bigger gap so right. if you're looking for consistency like always having 16 uh, points of margin around your content regardless of the screen size then you would want to assign it you know a specific point value rather than a percentage yeah great thank you 
exactly, Dave. That that's that's a, that's a valid point that I was trying to explain. But yeah, that that's well put, Dave. Uh, so so, uh, so let me let me mm -hmm. ask you this. So I, if you notice, I'm using Stack and Row. Okay, they they're new things mm -hmm. that I came across. I have no idea whether I'm using it as intended. But the only reason I put through them in was because mm -hmm. when I was creating the accordions, I wasn't mm -hmm. getting the stuff to show up inside the accordion group. So when I clicked on the accordion group, it was just like there was like things were just all over the place. Um, there are vertical displays of text. So I basically didn't have an idea as to how to control. So what I did is I threw in a stack and I threw in row. And I also mm -hmm. went into each view under the accordion and I, um, or each element under the accordion, I guess, view there. Um, and I set that width, the, the, the min width of it to 250 pixels or 250 points. And that's the only way I could mm -hmm. control. And that I don't think is efficient. So if you could just give me some guidance on that. I mean, I'm not sure if I'm using right and stack, I mean, row and stack, first of all, correctly. Sure, yeah. So let me, <clears throat> so stack is basically, uh, stack in rows <clears throat> where components that we created in which we could show, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, so sh so right, stack in rows were things that we created to show these uh, flex values in like a pectoral form. If you notice, like, you know, over here, we, we, we show them like, you know, what's actually happening. If you do start, things would be on the left side of the screen. And if you do center, it would be in the middle and the end on the other side, right? So that was basically a way of us trying to show you how you, how those items would be aligned on okay. the screen. Uh, just uh, to add, let me add real quick that mm -hmm. the row and the stack are basically like dumbed down versions of a view. So you can accomplish the same thing with a row as you can with a view by setting the direction to horizontal and it, it'll also give you a lot more options the row and stack components uh, don't have very many configuration options actually um, none besides the um, like center and uh, end and start so uh, okay anyway i just wanted to mention that go ahead Rahul. thank you in fact i think if i took it out now now that we have the view set up and we have actually got control with the flex I'm wondering if I took out the stack and the and the and the row, whether I would be able to display the stuff inside the accordion. That accordion inside the accordion was is still a challenge. I mean, if you go in inside the accordion, it's not displaying things correctly. Um, yeah, you know, let's take a look place. here. So I'm going to remove the stack for now because I think that's kind of was hindering the display a bit. So uh, what I also do is I want to remove this background color. Okay, so this is light and I believe I'll probably give it to this view. Yeah, yeah. so let me, right. let me remove that. So now let's try and opening it up again. And you can see view and this is kind of like scrollable if you can notice it like it's harder to do it on the builder sometimes but like this is this would be scrollable i i wasn't um, getting a scroll uh that's one question i had is 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 list by definition scrollable so even if you put an accordion in and it, it, it you know i mean the, basically there's two issues right scrollable and keyboards popping up to to mess things up i suppose keyboard is not an issue here there's nothing tight but scrollable, mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if, if, if it is scrollable. Oh, it is scrollable, cool. Uh, that's a great question, Chris. Uh, Dave, like, do you wanna, do you wanna go at it? Or uh, does the... The list mm -hmm. being scrollable by default, I believe it is. Okay, that's cool. That, that's, that's very powerful. And, and because one of, the, one of the issues that I had was using, you know, um, view, you know, keyboard, sensitive scroll, you know, that, that, in, in, in because, you know, it, it was just, you know, where you put it, like, you know, that itself, like, do you put it just, uh, do you put, you know, keyboard input, you know, like, was it uh, keyboard input aware, whatever, you know, view versus mm -hmm. the scrollable thing, right? Those two components, 
you know, where, particularly the keyboard input aware thing, where do you put it? Do you put it just local to a particular item? Do you put it like at the top level and sort of say like, let it apply to everything? And it, it, the strategy there was not very clear. You know, I, I didn't know what would be the best strategy. It would be nice to have some kind of a guidance on that. But, you know, even if it's not today. You know, I, tend to, I tend to put it at the top and put everything in, basically have it be the top level component and then uh especially with the i haven't played around much with the new uh keyboard aware scroll view but um i believe the other one's going to be deprecated and the new one um the, the time i tried it i just wrapped it everything in that and it worked so which one is going to get deprecated sorry the old keyboard aware view i think oh that's going to get deprecated okay yeah okay. Uh, i think i think it's a little uh yeah we mixed up a little bit so the keyword avoiding view would be deprecated right, right, soon right. and the key so we got the keyword aware view which is the new thing and pretty cool work by our engineers there uh which is a more responsive uh way of doing the keyboard shrink like you know so basically what it does is it basically shrinks your entire screen so that you know you can have the keyboard up here on top of it and it doesn't really you know take up doesn't really come on top of something that just kind of uh, shrinks down your flex view in a way that you can also accommodate the keyboard in there is what my understanding is but i can be wrong as well so, so, so. You're, you're, you're so you're saying the keyboard aware view will be there or won't be there i think I'm, I'm just the new to... one is the keyboard aware scroll view that's a the scroll. new one yeah oh, that's the scroll view okay right. yeah so if you have a title like my places right you just saw my places and you right. you want that to be fixed and you want any push-ups etc to kind of occur below that so then i would, I would imagine you could put uh this sc keyboard aware scroll view below the my places right so that it doesn't scroll that off uh, if you don't mind, let me just try it in front of everybody and see what happens. You can use right? this. You can do it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. Uh, okay. Let me try that. Uh, okay. I'm rolling. There's actually a accordion view there, which you might be able to use very effectively for that. If you go down below, uh, there's an accordion view. Oh, you... Oh, you're, you're uh, doing... no, I'm on the, oh, you're, yeah, you're... I, was, I was on the, Sorry. yeah, so there we go. Uh, just to like make things easier for like me to understand and the others as well, because like it's easier when we like make a screen out of scratch. So I'll just add like uh, text input screen, uh, sorry, just one here. And then you wanted something to be on top here. So yeah, let's say add is all... yeah, just say a title. Yeah, so we'll do this, put it here, and now this is a keyboard aware view. Let's see how it works first. <clears throat> right now, I think it wouldn't be an issue because there's a lot of space on the screen. Give it a second for it to load. Uh, by the way, Mohan, like, great job on your app. Like, I was just talking to um, Dave as well. Like, you know, like, uh, the way you are designing your app is, like, you're looking at the user's experience uh, to the notch, right? Like, you want your app to have the best user experience, although it might take a little bit longer for the app. It's, to, taking, like, a lot, it's taking a lot longer, but, yeah. <laughs> I remember we had a discussion with um, on the MVP, but uh, we we actually have a, a user group that's on WhatsApp, and they've been asking for this app, and I've been taking my merry time because I started back in September, and I said end of November, and it's now end of February almost. <laughs> <laughs> but I've learned a lot, guys. This is an awesome you know environment where between components, views, I I didn't know JavaScript diddly squat. I've learned JavaScript in the process. And I would have to say that that 
this tool has helped me just be nominally intelligent to be able to do serious damage. Good. That's awesome to hear. I'm sure George appreciates hearing that too. Yep. And uh, so I think what's happening here is a little bit with the safe area view. Uh, let me just fix that quickly. Oh, and I plan to, I do plan to get Firebase uh, SMS art uh, working. So as soon as I get over all this and get this first version of the app out, I'll do it and then I'll publish it out in a one sec if I get it working, if I get it working. Yeah, um, we, all we can do is wish you good luck, Mohan, and I don't know <laughs> when... <laughs> when with deep linking, I think a lot of those things might become possible. Oh, that um, was a serious issue for us because I, we released a travel app and and uh, which which was uh, which went nowhere with the with the with the COVID, right? So we just abandoned this abandoned abandoned that, and it, we used tons of deep linking there. And when I moved to this and I said there's no deep linking, it was like, oh my god, what are we gonna do? And now that's there, and I looked at how it was put in, and it's very nice because. It's so, you know, how much work we had to do with branch and stuff and how, how easy it is to do it now is like, mm -hmm. whoa, okay. I've not yeah. really tried it out, but I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so I kind of showcased this uh, while we were talking. Uh, so what basically I did, let me try to pull it back down again. So I'm simulating a screen with a lot of content here. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit lazy, so I didn't add anything. What I just did was I asked uh, my friend's text input to go down to the bottom of the list, simulating yep. that there's stuff here, right? Mm -hmm. So now what I do is when I click on it, you notice how the screen kind of shrank here so that, and notice this did not shrink at yep. all. I don't know if I can uh, show the that double in a better text, way. Text, the text box is still there on the top. Yeah. Exactly. So let me add some text here. That's cool. Although, yeah, there we go. Yeah, let's try so, that. So let's try that again. Whoa. Notice this did not shrink, Whoa. and then this part shrank, and then you can add your values here, and it works. And this is that's why we were like trying to say that you know this is like a better use case than the other uh, keyboard uh, avoiding you because we had to kind of like manually set things here for the keyboard avoiding view to work properly, but keyboard aware view just works out of the box. So you should be able to put, whether you're doing accordion, I mean, a fetch list, um, say you're doing an accordion below that, you should be able to do that, no sweat, by just anchoring the keyboard aware scroll view right on top as, 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 as you mentioned, right, Dave? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, great, thank you. Can you just help fix that problem I had asked uh, and with my with my accordion? I mean, I, it's not displaying, if you don't mind. Sure, let's have a look. Uh, Carl's asking, so is safe? Is it safe to say we should use keyboard aware scroll view instead of keyboard avoiding view? And what about compared to toggling scroll view on the entire page? Uh, yeah, use the new one because I think the old one's going to be going away. The new one's much better. And what about compared to toggling scroll view on the entire page? Uh, well, the, the, the scrolling on the entire page won't take the inputs into account. So the um, keyboard aware scroll view will make sure that when you've got an input on the screen that the keyboard's not covering it up while you're trying to type into it. Whereas the scroll view just makes it makes this uh, makes it scroll. Yeah. Okay. So technically, you could even get rid of the scroll view then, right? I mean, it's not it just just use one thing then, right? Yeah, the new the new keyboard aware is a scroll view, so it should um, you shouldn't need a, an additional scroll view. Okay.
This example is interesting because there are a number of locations or places that I have in that accordion list. Each yeah. one has a different set of attributes because you never know what subset of values people have entered. So it actually there's a test and display, test and display, and it seems to work very well. I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy. I was asking whether I would have some crash, but no, it actually works. <laughs> I think, <clears throat> sorry, my screen is a bit laggy now. Sorry about that. Uh, so, uh, Mohan, what was the problem that you were facing? Yeah, like I mean, I, I had, I, I thought I had um, in in each each of the views, of, you know, I had the title, the label that said like, you know, zip code or postal code and then the thing. That's what I was trying to achieve. And I think I did have that where you had the labels, but I was not even getting what you're getting right now. So that's the labels. Is, the labels are there. I think they're just the colors, almost oh, like the oh, background. Oh, oh. And so you this can't is working beautifully. It. I don't know. So you fixed it. Um, I, I don't know what particular thing you, that that fixed it here, uh, but it fixed it. Uh, it wasn't doing anything like that before. Oh yeah, that's good to know. And and to Dave's point, that's correct. Like you, you can see the labels here. It's just that it's a little it's bit. It's just the color. Contrast. It's okay. Yeah. That's exactly. Okay. Yeah, the, but 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 uh, well, do you think it's a flex that that won the day? I mean, in this, is that what's allowing that stuff to be shown, or because I think if you go to the if you go to any one of those things like 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 uh, zip code, right, on the view, I think I set the minimum width to be two fifty. Maybe I don't even need to do that. Can you just check? Uh, this? Sure. So if I go to zip code here, is there and... a minimum width that's set somewhere? Uh, maybe it's it's no. on the it's on the individual text input field. I think, yeah. Is it is there a minimum width that I set? No, uh, no, not oh. here. Maybe I didn't. Maybe, maybe on some other view. Maybe, maybe I, you know I thought I would set a minimum width, but maybe not. In which case, it's brilliant. So no, no, um, none of those things. Just flex. It looks right. Like yeah. So if you're using flex, you wouldn't really need those because the flex will automatically expand the entire thing to as much space as is available to them. So this is as easy as web design now. <laughs> it's if you know CSS, then yeah, I mean you can think about it a lot like CSS and the same kind of flex box or the grid. Like if you're familiar with CSS grid, it's similar, you know, to both of those. Okay. Okay. Um, and um, so if I'm using keyboard, this is this is great, guys. This is great. Thank you. Thank you for helping me with this. This is, uh, today was like just absolutely brilliant because I've now gotten over the biggest problem I had. How do I control the look and feel? So now awesome. it's easy. Baby, awesome. baby. Work. Great. Thank you. Yep. Uh, you're very welcome, Mohan. And thank you for letting us like, go through this process on your app and letting others benefit from this as well. So thank you. And thank you, Rahul, for showing everybody. <laughs> oh, uh, like, yeah. Oh, I Happy think this is, so. I hope a lot of people see this because I think the flex is one of the most powerful things we have. Definitely, especially for responsive behavior, you know, where you, you're trying to accommodate different screen sizes and all that, you know. Uh, perhaps in the next session, uh, office hours, if we could go over the the um, checkbox, if 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 I don't know, if, I mean, is one item where you know uh, exactly when what you want to do in the in the boot up, in the I guess in the act on press, on um, on check, and then on on check on uh, on check, the the there's there's a number of things right. Like if you have a number of checkboxes. There's like in you know, a question of, you know, you had mentioned the thing, Dave, the last time. I think your use case was, you know, you you're 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 using the uh, the fetch. What's it called? Um, the cache objects, the um, the endpoint objects to kind of do uh, update. You know, sort of uh, refreshes as soon as you create an object, you get a ref. You know, you get an you get an object which is aware observer that's aware of it. And then mm -hmm. that's one, but then there's also a question of, um, all right, I was trying to do something like when the checkbox comes, disable the, 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 the checkbox. So that the only time the checkbox becomes enabled again is if they start typing inside the 
text field, for example, if there's a text field associated with the checkbox. So I would type something in the check, uh, text field, and then the checkbox becomes uh, appears. And then when I click on the checkbox, some actions are carried out, and then the check mark comes on, and then the checkbox becomes disabled till you go back into the text field and start tapping again, right? And I was trying to do that, and I was having difficulty doing that. But I'll try it out again. Perhaps something that could be done next next session. Yeah, you could always check your input value to see if you have mm -hmm. something uh, have a value in the text yeah. input, and then you know. But I can only do to... one. I can only do so. What I do, mm -hmm. I did was uh, I displayed, I displayed the checkbox only if someone had entered something with the text input, right? Otherwise, the checkbox is not visible. That's great. But then I wanted to check, I wanted to put something in the disabled field, which said, if the checkbox appears, then disable the checkbox. But then I was running into some problems. I don't know why, maybe it was just incidental. Maybe if I go back and look at it again. But what I did was I took the checkbox, checkbox value, you know, and I put that in the disabled. And I said, if that exists, disable the text box. Right? Yeah. So it didn't seem to work, but I'll check it again. That's yeah. it. Thank you. Sure, no problem. Yeah, thank you, Mohan. And yeah, like your checkbox issue, I think it might take, like, you know, we would have to look at it to like actually kind of figure it out what's going on. Uh, so we lost your, your sound or it's a little low. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay, I hope it's yes, better sir. now. Yeah, that's better. Perfect. All right, Mohan, thanks again Bye. for Thank you, Mohan. helping. And it looks like Carl's problem got sorted out by itself. Great job, Carl. Yep. All right, well, I don't see any more questions. Uh, Rahul, did you have anything else you wanted to show off or go over? Um. Not at the moment, actually. Like I kind of went over the two things that I, I had prepared for today. Cool. And, uh... All right. Well, I guess we'll wrap up for today. Um, uh, Carl, any plan to implement easy infinite scroll soon? Mm, not, not any plans I'm aware of for soon, anyway. But you can do it, right, Rahul? We've got some... There's some posts in community about infinite scroll. <laughs> Carl said it wouldn't be an office, <coughs> excuse me, an office hours without a roadmap question. Uh, George, feel free to chime in if you've got any anything to say about infinite scroll view or infinite scroll, but uh, I don't have any information um stuff coming down the pipe mm, i don't think anything's really ready to to talk about yet so maybe next time we'll have something for you all right guys anything else rahul you good all right man we'll we'll see y'all y'all uh, next tuesday all right have a good one